Hello everyone, today, we are diving into the fascinating world of printed dipole antenna arrays. Whether you're a student, an engineer, or just curious about antenna technology, this video will provide you with a comprehensive understanding of these sophisticated devices. Stay tuned. A printed dipole antenna is a fundamental and widely used type of antenna in modern communication systems. Its simplicity, low cost, and ease of integration with other electronic components make it a popular choice for various applications. A dipole antenna consists of two conductive elements arms that are typically driven by a balanced feed line. The length of each arm is approximately a quarter of the wavelength of the operating frequency, making the total length around half the wavelength. In a printed dipole antenna, the conductive elements are printed on a dielectric substrate, similar to a printed circuit board PCB. This configuration allows for easy integration with other circuit components and offers mechanical stability. Printed dipole antennas are used in the critical applications such as wireless communication, RFID systems, Internet of Things devices, telecommunications, and aerospace and defense. Printed dipole antennas have features such as compact and lightweight, low cost and easy manufacturing, ease of integrations, stable performance, and versatility. Feeding a dipole antenna correctly is crucial to ensure efficient radiation and impedance matching. Here are some different techniques commonly used to feed dipole antennas. 1. Balance feeding utilizes a balanced transmission line, such as a twin lead or a balanced microstrip line. This technique ensures that equal currents flow in opposite directions in the dipole arms, resulting in symmetrical radiation. Coaxial feeding, in this method, a coaxial cable is used, where the inner conductor is connected to one arm of the dipole, and the outer conductor is connected to the other arm. It requires a balloon balance to unbalanced transformer to convert the unbalanced coaxial feed to a balanced dipole feed. Microstrip line feeding. In this technique, a microstrip line is printed on the same substrate as the dipole. The microstrip line can be directly connected to the dipole arms or through a matching network to ensure impedance matching. Coplanar waveguide CPW feeding. A coplanar waveguide structure where the central conductor and ground planes are on the same plane as the dipole is used in this technique. It offers a balanced feed without requiring a balloon. Aperture coupled feeding. In this technique, the feed line is placed on the opposite side of the substrate, and the slot allows the electromagnetic energy to couple to the dipole. Gamma match. In this situation, a single wire or a rod is connected at a point along the dipole arm and then runs parallel to the feed line. This feeding provides an adjustable matching network. Delta match, this method is similar to the gamma match, but uses two wires forming a triangular shape and provides better impedance matching over a wider range. Choosing the appropriate feeding technique for a dipole antenna depends on the specific application, frequency range, and design constraints. Understanding these techniques will enable you to design efficient and effective dipole antennas for various wireless communication needs. This slide introduces the structural parameters of a single element printed dipole antenna and a 124-way power divider and provides an overview of the design steps. By the end of this tutorial, you will learn how to design a single element printed dipole antenna and extend it to a one for array using a microstrip power divider. All within CST Studio Suite, this comprehensive approach will provide a solid foundation for designing efficient printed dipole antenna arrays for various applications. Let's fire up CST Studio Suite and start the simulation. Open CST and select New Project. Select Microwave and RF, Optical from the Template Options. Select Antennas. Choose Planar. Now choose Frequency Domain Solver for this analysis. Click on Next. Set the frequency range from 2 GHz to 3 GHz to cover our frequency of interest. After that, press Next, press Finish to create the project. As a first step, we will add the structural parameters to the Parameter List section.
Now, we would like to define a dielectric substrate. Go to Modeling and select Brick, then press ESC to show the dialog box. Create a dielectric substrate with the parameters defined dot dot. We'll use FR for dielectric. In the load from material library search to find FR4. With the dielectric parameters set, we'll move on to designing the layout of the single element printed dipole antenna. Through modeling and brick, draw the layouts.
By pressing the S key on your keyboard, select the end surface of the transmission line. Next, click on Simulation in the top menu, from there, select Waveguide Port. Apply a margin of 5 times H to the right, left, and top sides of the waveguide ports. To cover the bottom edge of the dielectric, consider a margin of H. As of now, everything appears to have been completed. Before starting the simulation, 
we should define some frequency specifications to see radiation patterns at far field. Go to the field monitor, then active the button of far field, RCS and define another settings like me. Now, go to Setup Solver and start simulation. After finishing simulation, by clicking on S parameters folder see the return loss for antenna. To see far field radiation patterns, go to far field folder and select the frequency point of to point for gigahertz. Now, you can see the 3D radiation pattern at to point for gigahertz. In this design, we used FR4 dielectric which is very popular in microwave applications. However, this dielectric is very lossy, as a result, as you see there is a difference between directivity and realized gain. The second step of this tutorial is going to design a one-time for array of dipole antenna. This section involves designing a one to four way micro strip power divider using CST Studio Suite. Let's starting the simulation. Select microwave and RF optical from the template options. Select circuits and components. Choose planar couplers and dividers. Now choose frequency domain solver for this analysis. Click on next. In this section, Set the frequency range from 2 GHz to 3 GHz to cover our frequency of interest. After that, press Next, press Finish to create the project of Design Power Divider. Now, we'll add the structural parameters into Parameter List section. Through modeling and brick to find a dielectric substrate. Now, in the same process, define a ground plane for the created substrate.
With the dielectric and ground plane parameters set, we'll move on to designing the layout of the power divider. It is just a matter of smoothing the sharp corners between lines. Smoothing these sharp corners help to improve impedance matching. To do that, by pressing S on the keyboard, select the sharp edge of the corner, then go to Blend option and select Chamfer.
since the power divider has a symmetrical structure. So, we can design the half of layout with defined parameters. Then, mirror them to complete the remain layout. Now, begin to define waveguide ports at the input and outputs of the power divider. In the 1 to 4 way power divider, port 1 is input port and ports 2, 3, 4, and 5 are output ports. To start the run, go to Setup Solver, here some setting is required. Click on the source type, and choose the selection option. Now, in the excitation list, active port 1, then go back to the source type and select port 1. Finally click on Start to begin analysis. When the analysis is completed, open the S parameters folder and see scattering parameters. The results confirm that this power divider has a good performance and its return loss for minus 15 decibels covers a frequency band from 1 GHz to 3 GHz. And the transmission coefficient is minus 7 and 8 decibels in the whole operating bandwidth. We can see due to use FR4 dielectric there is a loss of 2 decibels in heat transmission coefficient results. In the final section of this tutorial, I am going to connect this power divider to the design single element dipole antenna. We can do that in a simple way, first select all output waveguide ports, then delete all of them. Now go to the CST file of the design dipole antenna. Select all defined solids. Now, go to home in the top menu and select copy button. Go back to the CST file related to the power divider and pass the selected components. Then press enter on the keyboard dot dot. The antenna array configuration is just moved here in a separate component. In the navigation tree, you can find the new components in a folder named component 2. By selecting component to folder, the dipole antenna configuration is selected. Go to modeling and choose the transform. We can move component to to each direction is desired.
Now, we want to connect the input port of the antenna to the one of output ports of power divider. To do that, it is enough to select a point in the input port of the antenna by pressing S on the keyboard. Then find the corresponding point in the output port of the power divider and select that point by pressing the S key. Now, select the component S and go to the Transform option. Automatically, the input of antenna connects to the output of power divider. Now, by considering the distance between output ports, copy the antenna elements three times through transform option. Now, go to Boundaries and select the Open Add Space for all directions. Before starting the simulation, Far Field Frequency Points should be defined. Go to the Field Monitor. Then active the button of Far Field, RCS and define a frequency bandwidth with a desired step width. I choose 0.05 as step width in the frequency range from 2 GHz to 3 GHz. Now go to Setup Solver and select all ports in the setting and press Start. By finishing analysis, go to See Simulation Results. Open the S Parameters folder, as it is expected. The antenna array fed by power divider is working at frequency of 2.4 GHz. Moreover, all data for Farfield analysis of this structure can be found in the Farfield folder. At 2.4 GHz, this antenna array exhibits a directivity of 12.4 dB. In spite of this, the antenna realizes a gain of 9.28 dB. By multiplying radiation efficiency by directivity, antenna gain can be calculated. Because we used the FR4 dielectric, we should expect low radiation efficiency due to losses. In the 1D result folder, we can see the radiation efficiency. It can be seen that the radiation efficiency at 2.4 GHz is about 50%. It is possible to increase antenna gain by using dielectrics with low loss such as Rogers Row 4000 series. Moreover, all data for Farfield analysis of this structure can be found in the Farfield folder. In this tutorial, we have explored the design process of an end fire printed dipole antenna array. We started with the design of a single element dipole antenna, progressed to designing a 1 2 4 way power divider, and finally demonstrated how to feed a dipole array antenna using the design power divider. We hope this comprehensive guide has provided you with valuable insights and practical skills to apply in your own antenna design projects. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you found it helpful, 
please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials on designing microwave and millimeter wave components. Don't forget to leave your comments and questions below. We love hearing from you and are here to help. Stay tuned for more content and happy designing.